Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to Go Broke Investing. Uh, really excited about this episode today. Uh, we're going to be talking about NFTs. NFTs, you probably heard Gary V talking about it, and you've heard all these different uh, musicians, uh, Jay-Z or Dame Dash, and, and different people talking about NFTs. Well, we're really going to give you a, a, a easy way to understand it and break it down so that you can start getting yourself invested in NFTs if you so choose. So um, without further ado, we're going to dive into it. So it's me, Leon, and we got Jizz here. Jizz is like our resident NFT expert. I mean, he's he's really dove into it and, and he's done the research. He actually owns a couple of NFTs. So he's really going to break this down for us. And so we'll kind of get into this. So the first thing we want to talk about today is what what is an nft what does that stand for because <laughs> hey, a lot of people see that yeah. and they're like what is that yeah thing yep thank you um thank you leon and i'm glad to be back on here um took a little break but i'm glad um season two i guess <laughs> season and, two kickoff yep. yep and um like you said my name is just clerk they call me just for short and um yeah i've been hearing about this and like most people i was skeptical at first but as I started doing, I couldn't get away from it. You know, I'm doing my investing research, I'm doing crypto research, and then NFTs keep popping up left and right. This company that, this artist that, this athlete, right? So um, like you said, basically starting off, NFTs is an acronym for non-fungible tokens. So when it says um, tokens, they're talking about crypto. So when they say it's a non-fungible token, that means it's not easily transferred into another asset of the same value, right? So we're talking about crypto. If you're talking about Bitcoin, you know what the price of Bitcoin is at a particular time, right? So right now it's hovering somewhere around 47,000. So if I go and I buy some Bitcoin, I know what the price is. If I sell some Bitcoin, I know what, some, what the price is, right? If I have a dollar bill, it's worth 25 cents. Right. You can right. you can break it down. If if it if it's crumpled, if it has food stains on it, it's still a dollar bill. Right. You can't right. say, no, I want I want 90 cents for it because it has ketchup stains on it. Right. Right. So when you say something is non fungible, it usually equates to something that is not a currency that somebody else wants and puts a value on it. Right. So okay. if, if I have. um let's say I have a Emmett Smith jersey and then you say, um, I want to buy that from you. And then I say, okay, give me 500 bucks for it, right? You either take it or leave it, right? right. So that's, that's not non-fungible because somebody else can say, I'll give you 400 bucks for it, take it or leave it. Unless they're going to try to argue with me for the basic price that I originally bought it for. Okay. Right? I'm trying to make a profit off of it. Hey, this is Emmett Smith. Come on. Right. So right. when we get to non-fungible tokens, it's basically digital digitizing assets that either represent a physical asset or it's clearly digital all from the start. So you created something, you digitized it on the blockchain. So the majority of um, NFTs are were started on the Ethereum blockchain, a different blockchain from the one that you're buying regular tokens from it's a different protocol there's a separate code just for nfts right? okay so so yeah. so so all right so if i'm if i'm just getting into this i'm going okay you just said it's developed on the ethereum blockchain but it's not ethereum so it's right? it's using ethereum's code but it's a separate it's like a separate chain of ethereum because every time they make a block Every time there's a transaction mm -hmm. associated with it, that's a unique code. So the um, right. regular um, Ethereum chain is the same chain. So that's where you know the Ethereum tokens, it, don't, and, it doesn't change. And just for perspective, I think people need to understand that uh, the cryptocurrency is ETH that is rewarded by processing on the Ethereum blockchain, right? Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of people think Ethereum is the currency, but Ethereum is actually the blockchain, the protocol mm -hmm. uh, of how we do, of, of how things are done. And uh, once it's mined or, or whatnot, uh, the currency for mining Ethereum is ETH. 
And so that's a big difference, you know, because what is the saying here is that, you know, the, the NFT is created on the Ethereum blockchain, mm -hmm. right? So somebody is still getting ETH for mining and creating that NFT on the Ethereum blockchain. But now that, it, that, now that NFT within itself is an asset, a digital asset. Yeah. Right. And that's, and that's the thing is that um, when when they created the different, um, that's one thing I do need to research is what was the reason for them originally creating that separate code? Did they originally have this planned or was it kind of an accident? And it was like, oh, this has a actually a, something, we can do something with this, right? Right. So what they're doing now is like, let's say, right, you see what we have a lot of artwork, we have these digital art that's coming out and they code it in the blockchain and they make it an NFT, right? Right. So what, what's giving it value is because of supply and demand. So it's basic right. supply and demand. So the magic number right now is some, some project develops and they mint. So just like minting crypto, they mm -hmm. mint NFTs. So they'll say we're releasing 10,000 and that seems to be the magic number, 10,000 NFTs and you can come and you can, when you say you're going to buy, I want one of these, you're actually going to mint it, the NFT, and they create it for you. So, so people are making tons of money off this stuff, right? And so, you know, that brings me to my, you know, the next question a lot of people ask is, why is it valuable? Yeah. Well, uh, from what I can see and what you've said is it's a supply and demand thing, yep. right? Yep. And then the, no, the more notable Yes. The person who minted it is the more valuable this becomes. Yes, exactly. Because right? that's the, so it, you have the unique things that happen in this space right now. So one of the first projects ever created as an NFT was called CryptoPunks. So you can Google it. You can go on various platforms. It's very popular now. And the developer, the, the team that put it together, just put it out for fun to their community. Right. So again, they the ones who started that whole model of 10,000. They minted 10,000 crypto punks and the punks have different um, characteristics and mm -hmm. different hair color, different skin color, sunglasses. One guy's got a cigarette in his mouth. So some of them are rare traits. Some of them are common traits. Right. Right. But it was cool. And you have these guys was like, hey, I'll come in. I'll get one. I'll tell my buddy he'll grab one. They gave him away for free. Right. They gave him away for free just as a cool project. Um, 10, almost 10 years later, seven years later is 2014. And um, now they're having some value. People are seeing that they're actually um, liking what's going on. So they um, decided now they're putting it on the marketplace. People want to buy it from them. It, again, supply and demand. The 10,000 already gone. They're already right. gone, right? So now you have people now seeing this. And they're saying, well, I want to duplicate what crypto punks did. So now you have clown punks, you have this, punk, right. you have um, all of these, was it bored apes? You have all of these things coming out. Now you have penguins, you have pandas, right? So the whole thing is 10,000 is still the magic number, but within those 10,000, only a small percentage will have this individual trait, making it even more rare than the other 10,000. Right. So, so <laughs> if you're listening to this and you're thinking, I don't understand what, what I don't get it. <laughs> Why is it not valuable? If you're like me, right. You know, I have, you know, I'm, if you're in your thirties, you're like, what is going on here? I don't mm. understand what it's just, you know, why can I download this, a picture of a crypto punk and sell yeah. it. Right. Well, you know, it really clicked for me um, because, uh, you know, I have a kid that's a gamer. Mm -hmm. Right. And then you go up, you go, you know, I go upstairs and, and my kids playing a game. And, and when you really look at it, they're playing that game and they have a character and they want what they call skins mm -hmm. or they want mm -hmm. different things. They actually have to use some sort of digital currency that really comes from real currency, <laughs> my money, yep. and to buy these different features and things that they want to yep. put on to the their game, characters. Yep. Right. And so then that's when it clicked to me. I said, ah, okay, I get it. So, so there's people out there and they have placed value mm -hmm. on non fungible to tokens and whether yeah. or not you believe they're valuable or not, uh, 
they over time increase and appreciate and people want them and you can make money off of them similar to artwork you know people buy uh jc talks about i think it's like a bosque or, or whatever it is uh these paintings appreciate over time so, well guess what these digital assets appreciate over time yeah. um i think also for people who will watch this recording i'm going to switch over um, and share my screen so that they can see these websites. And there's various different, it's not only artwork, right? For people who are new to NFTs, um, that's what's getting a lot of the attention. But if you've been watching sports, um, there's a lot of athletes who are now getting into the NFT space. I actually saw this today. I knew about this website, um, I posted about them before Eternity. They actually, when they launched, they um, launched an NFT for Muhammad Ali. So his right. um, family, his trust release, gave him permission to use his name and his likeness. And they came out with a few things and that was the first thing. So now they have Dan Marino on here. I was looking um, earlier and they, they also have um, Dak, Dak Prescott on here, right? So for any of these, if you're a football fan, if you're a um, Miami Dolphins fan, right? So you start to say, okay, what is the value of this? Well, how so, many how many so for football the, for fans the, are there? For the people listening, what website are you at here? Eternity, E T H E R N I T Y dot I O. And so, dot I O. And so, if you're listening, you're probably like, okay, what are, what are we talking about here? Well, uh, you know, when you were younger, you might have collected uh, rookie cards, or you might have collected tops, or something mm -hmm. like that, and you know, some of those cards today are worth thousands. Some are worth hundreds of thousands. Yep. I mean, imagine if you had a LeBron James rookie card. Yep. I don't know if there if yep. that exists. And so what what's happening here is uh, a just a digitized form of that. Instead yep. of actually having a physical card, you have a digitized form. So if, if you were one of those people that traded cards, that's that's what we're talking about here. Yep. But we're taking it a step further. Uh, some athletes and notable figures are now minting directly. Mm -hmm. And so what does that mean? That means, I mean, that's like getting an autographed jersey or like a, mm -hmm. something directly from yeah. the person. And they're saying, hey, I'm only giving out 10 of these or I'm only yep. giving out yep. 20 of these. Yep. Uh, that instantly makes it more valuable. Yeah, yeah. on one of these other sites, um, it takes forever to load. So I'm even afraid to, to type it up, but it's called autograph. So it's autograph.io is actually a partnership with DraftKings. I think um, everybody knows DraftKings. They partnered with Tom Brady. He created the site so that he has his version of this. So I mean, let me see if uh, today you can get on there pretty easily. So he signed up um, other, other athletes. So right, Tom Brady, Tiger Woods, I think everybody knows who that is, right? Naomi Osaka, Derek Jeter. I did right? see this. Wayne Gretzky. So yeah. the, the crazy thing about it is you, you have to know about these things so you can take advantage of them, right? So I was watching, right. I was watching this and uh, my trading team got in on this for the Simone Biles drop. So when the Simone Biles drop came in, tons of people were on their Telegram, on their Instagram, get in on Simone Biles, get in on Simone Biles. I think alone we must have sold, sold a, bought them all out, right? I, I'm not that big a baseball fan, so I wasn't even paying attention to um, Derek Jeter, right? So these were selling for 12 bucks, right? They're all sold out because he just went into the Hall of Fame. Right. So it's all about timing and it's all about the, mm. the name recognition, right? Everybody knows Derek Jeter, right? So right. it's one thing when you're talking about a crypto punk and you're like, what the hell's a crypto punk? But if I say it's an autograph, a digital autograph, of Derek Jeter, somebody's like, okay, well, that makes some sense. But again, it's not just a digital autograph. When you when you get these, um, these athletes have their own Discord communities, and having this autograph gives you access to his Discord group, right? Okay. You All can't right. just and you can't just click on Discord and just click Derek Jeter and you're in, <laughs> right? So this is going to give you access because it's coded. It's coded that right. this, this NFT will give you access to his Discord group. Okay. Right. And that's the, that's the unique thing that these artists are doing, these athletes are doing, 
Like you can have someone, an artist say, if you buy my NFT and it's one of the, the rare NFTs, let's say it's a thousand dollar NFT, you can come to any of my com um, concerts with proof of your NFT and you'll get um, VIP access, right? So they're doing very unique things. And this is when we're talking about open C, right? Some you're looking at this and say, okay, this is cool, but I'm not gonna pay, you know, three hundred dollars for a picture of a flower. I'm not gonna pay, you know, 0.059 Ethereum for a picture of a cat with a mustache, right? So when you look, go to um, what the athletes are doing and what the influencers are doing, that's a little bit more, you know, within the realm of possibility for people. They can wrap their heads around it, right? And you're talking about LeBron James. Is one of my favorite um, NFT sites and Top Shot. And while you're bringing that up, I just want to, you know, this is uh, this is a major topic. So we're breaking this up into two episodes, right? And so the first episode right now, we're just kind of covering the, we're giving you the overview. But next episode, uh, Jiz is really going to jump in and talk about strategy and. Um, things like that, because you're probably sitting there like, how do I, you know, if you're new, you're like, how do I even get into this? Um, and if you're experienced, you know, then, then you're experienced. But um, so right now he's on NBA top shot. And so that he he's, he's basically going through and, and NBA top shot, something that came across my radar. If you're, if you're uh, listen, if you're an investor, I'm going to be honest with you. You need to be on Twitter. You need to be on social media platforms. <laughs> yeah. Because this this stuff comes out, you know, sometimes months before it hits the mainstream. When you see it on the news, it's already too late, right? And you'll see people on Twitter and Discord and all this, and they're just talking about stuff months before. And so you just want to, you know, you might need to open up your social media platforms and, and dust them off and, and go. But I saw this NBA Top Shots months ago, months ago before it got before it got big. And now, I mean, he, he pulled up a, a picture. There's a, it's it's a video of LeBron James dunking. And I thought I saw was it eighteen hundred dollars. Yeah, that was like the, the starting price of it. Um, eighteen hundred dollars. I mean, you know, uh, eight months ago, that might have been like five dollars. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there was a there was a guy. There's a guy I follow on Instagram. Um, I think his name is the Investing Tutor. Uh, he talked about how he missed out on uh, seventy thousand dollars because he didn't buy in when Gary V first released his V friends or, or or his NFTs, and now there were one of them's worth seventy thousand dollars, and and it would have cost him two or three thousand at the time to buy. So you got it. That's another thing. You got to be on these quickly um and then you got to be patient so yeah i mean um right here these nfts are basically digital highlights and again when someone says well i can go on youtube and i can get these highlights right well you wouldn't have you wouldn't have ownership of that if you buy these highlights you own this highlight they partnered with the nba right this isn't just a company who just you know, copy these from some other random site. They have permission from the NBA to package this and to sell it in their marketplace. Right, right. and so that that adds the authenticity, right? So mm -hmm. you're you're basically that's like you know NFL films or NBA films uh, going into their archive and getting a piece of their archive uh, for your own for your own records, and it's authentic from them. Um, and a lot of people may not care about things like that, but uh, people place value on that. Yeah, I mean, this is there are people making like this is the top sales. One of the LeBron James sold for two hundred and thirty thousand dollars. This company is only um, two years old. This is this platform is still in beta, right? <laughs> when they fully launch this to the rest of the world, you know what what is this going to be? They just launched the um, WNBA version of this, right? So just like you're talking about um, people who are into sports collecting baseball cards, you would trade baseball cards, people are flipping these, right? You come in here, you buy one and it's worth 50 bucks. You get another one and you, you trade it and you make 
$100 profit, and then now you go and buy another one that's more expensive. People are making serious money just flipping these NF these um, digital NFTs. And the key point here is uh, <laughs> maybe you don't fully understand it or grasp it, but but you should be able to grasp, you know, making money. And, and, and that, that's what's happening here. Um, if you buy something, you know, if you buy a, a, a barracuda car, or, you know, if you buy some exotic fish or something like that, and, and somebody comes along and they offer you stupid money for it, I mean, you're not going to turn that down, are you? I mean, you may, um, but, you know, if you have uh, a 1995 Impala class, you know, it's the people determine the value of these things. And as we further into the, the you know, 20, 2021 and 2022, there is going to be more value on digital assets than there is on, on physical assets, uh, which by the way, physical assets can be digitized now too, um, which is pretty crazy. Yeah, there, there's um, companies now coming out with real estate that's being backed by NFTs. So you can actually fractionalize that um, property and then you can buy an NFT of that property. So now it's like making a stock of that property. The NFT is like a stock, basically. Yeah. So this is another website. Um, most of this is um, European soccer, European football. So they have fan tokens and the NBA have gotten in on this as well. So there's a couple of NBA teams that are on here. Um, the U UFC is getting in on this. So basically these teams create these tokens and you can purchase these tokens for specific privileges. They're gonna have voting privileges. Um, I don't, they haven't released yet. Like what will you be voting on? But it could be something like, okay, are we wearing the light um, uniforms or the dark uniforms this game, right? But as you start to collect them, you, you have um, certain privileges. You can use them um, within the stadiums for things. And then you can even cash them out, right? They're backed by regular crypto. So you could cash them out, right? You can um, trade them if you wanted to trade them. So you can see the different teams that are on here for people who are listening, the 76ers, the um, Celtics, Cavaliers, the Kings, Magic, you know, um, the Clippers, the Rockets, the Bulls, Timberwolves, Pistons, and now the Suns are also, um, not the Suns, sorry. Um, That's a Gold State Warriors. Yeah, yeah the so Warriors. So this is socios.com. So, you so can, mm -hmm. yeah, so so we talked about what an NFT is, right? We've defined what it is. We've we've given examples, mm -hmm. uh, and then we've we've gone as far as actually we've gone out to websites, and we're 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 showing examples. That's all. That's all great, right? But mm -hmm. I'm Joe Schmo investor, or I'm whoever. How do I? acquired i've seen the website mm -hmm. but talk to me about how do i acquire it and how do i get yeah. many custody of, these, of this thing yeah many of these platforms they have what is called um a wallet a digital wallet that you would connect to so if you're familiar with crypto you have um digital wallets which are embedded in your your browser so if you look right here if you're on the um, video you can see i'm pointing to the top right corner this um, MetaMask is one of the um, wallets, right? So, so you so, need a you need a wallet that is capable of holding these digital assets, right? So we're yeah. talking about a digital wallet, and so there's only so many digital wallets that can hold uh, NFTs, and so the one the one that he's talking about right now is called MetaMask, mm -hmm. right? So you would download MetaMask and you would load. Uh, a cryptocurrency, whichever cryptocurrency, currency, the 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 website that you're purchasing mm -hmm. the NFT from prefers. I've, mm -hmm. I've only really seen Ethereum on these, mm -hmm. um, yeah, and then more and more are coming out now. So Binance, if you're on a Binance, um, so you can you can actually connect Binance Network to MetaMask, so you don't have to get a separate wallet. So MetaMask is very versatile. But there, there's different ones like this other one up here is called Stacks. It's a different wallet. 
Cardano has a couple of their own wallets as well. And then Solana, which has um, been on the news a lot in the crypto space, has been catching a lot of steam. They've released NFTs and they have a wallet called Phantom. So, you know, okay. as you start to learn these things, yeah, you connect to the site and the right. site will ask you to connect your wallet to it. But okay. NBA Top Shot is direct payment. There's no wallet to connect. So this is regular credit card, debit card right now. Okay. All right. So you've got, it looks like you've got traditional currency out here, but not everybody accepts traditional currency. Yeah, most of them so, don't. Yeah. So the first thing you need to know is, okay, if I'm buying from a website, what type of currency do they take? Can I just, you know, can I just, you pull out my credit card uh, or do I need Ethereum? And so uh, that's the first thing. The second question you need to ask yourself is uh, what kind of wallet do I have that's going to house this thing? And so you need to, you need to have that. You need to have that wallet so that when you pay, you know, you can store your, your NFT in there. Um, and, and then you go from there. So these are, these are the things that you need to look at first. Don't, don't just go all willy nilly and start, <laughs> you know, uh, buying stuff. You know, you want to make sure that you have the process set up first. Uh, so that's important. And you also want to be able to trust the website that you're going to as well. Yeah, if you're there's a lot of scams out there. Yeah, that's big, big point there, right? So you go to NBA Top Shot, you want to have that website there. Um, I don't think there's any knockoffs of this because this is very complicated. But when you go to um, if you want a digital collectible, you want to stick with the big names that you know, um, OpenSea, Mintable, Rarible, those are pretty big and popular um NFT marketplaces. You don't want to go to a random site you hit Google and you hit CryptoPunks and then some random guy created a website selling fake CryptoPunks, right? So you, go, you wanna go to OpenSea. And even if you go on OpenSea, you wanna be careful because um, people just like eBay, people can sell fake stuff on there as well, right? So what you wanna do is when you go into the search, so this will tell you to, to connect your wallet. This one um, OpenSea only uses right now. Well, they have different wallets. You can see the Coinbase wallet, BitSki. So there's a whole bunch of different ones. The more popular ones is the MetaMask, um, Coinbase wallet, and Wallet Connect. You'll see those being used in a lot of different um, platforms, right? So you go on the search, and if you're looking for CryptoPunks, so you type in CryptoPunks, and you're going to see this blue check mark. It's just like um, when you're on social media and if there's um, a celebrity or an influencer, right. it it's has verified. the approval, yeah. so the stamp of approval. So there are some projects that are relatively new that haven't received the stamp of approval. So we can go into that um, on the next episode as well. But this is the, the go-to right there. If you see the um, verified, it says verified, then you know that that's the actual um creator in the actual collection they call it the collection that you want like if i came on here and this check mark wasn't here and instead of seeing ten thousand items there's only like a hundred items you know it's probably fake okay so so again you know the overview of of everything so you know definitely stay tuned or you know come to our our next episode where we're going to get into um just going to, he's going to dive into strategy and what that looks like. Um, so until then, we'll see you next time. All right. Take care.